Yo, what's up? We are now at Brun Center and uh, this is a fossil car. It's a Kia Seed or whatever I'm gonna call it. Plug-in hybrid. It's a long story. I will tell you uh, during the way, I guess. You know the drill, 1000 kilometer challenge. I'm plugging in right now. We're gonna leave soon. We will drive the regular Sweden trip this time. So the car has been charged to... Is it gonna go home? Yeah, you see the, the plug-in battery is at 97%. We have full tank. So we will actually leave exactly at 10. So we'll start driving south soon. Yeah, so live stream is running. I'm gonna unplug soon and then off we go. We are on the move now. Uh, we stopped behind some uh, left lane huggers as usual because this is Norway. But the fuel consumption right now is really low because we've been running on battery most of the time. So you see, we have driven 42 kilometers. 0.9 liters per 100 kilometer. That is wonderful. That is better than the brochure. <laughs> but we are now down to 15% battery. And if you look at the energy flow here, we are still running on electric. The engine hasn't started yet, but it will kick in soon. Yeah. <laughs> so we have this initial buffer to save a little bit of fuel. But from here, we still have to rely on uh, the fossil. We are now in Sweden. Oh man, I miss this place. <laughs> but this is a red zone. <laughs> So um, we will not stop in the red zone. We will get over to the green stone. I mean, I, I can't stop here. I'm allowed, I'm fully allowed to stop in the, in the red zone. Uh, Norway, they consider uh, the red zone to be safe as long as you take the shortest route and only stop to, for gas or whatever. If I sleep over, then I have to quarantine. But anyway, so far we have driven one hour and 13 minutes. Consumption has increased now to 4.6 liters per 100 kilometer. It will increase further. I bet it will be 6 liters per 100 kilometer eventually. So the reason why it's low now because we had that initial uh, battery buffer we spent. But now the battery is down to, uh, to 10% and it will probably stay there for the rest of the trip. <laughs> so all right, let's enjoy the ride. All right, we have now passed the two hour mark. Look, two hours we have driven. Oh yeah, speak like Yoda. Our speed is okay. You see, we have about 100, how much is this? 117 kilometers per hour. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but I want to show you something. I brought the Asa crate with me. Okay, hang on, I'm, I'm watching the road here, so. But this is the cooler box and I power it from the from the outlet from the back. But I also brought this one here, which is Club Sandwich. I bought it from uh, Rema Thusen yesterday because I wanted to save time. So this might not be a, a typical case for my, most people. I think it's, I guess it's a mix 50-50. Some people bring food from home, but some people don't. But I want to save those precious minutes by bringing a, a little bit of snack from home and drinks also. I have drinks in the Alsoclit. So just letting you guys know that I actually did a few things to uh, speed up this, this trip. But I will probably have a burger stop eventually. We are getting close to Weidberg, my first planned charging stop. And you can see here that we are uh, 14 kilometers away from Weidberg. Now, I don't have to stop here car the car doesn't have to stop here so the car estimates another 296 kilometers well i'm not sure if i can trust it but we have done uh, 330 plus four percent this car under reports as much as four percent but the problem is that we've been driving for three hours and i have to pee and also i've been thinking now that after wild bike then we have 120 zone and then the car will probably consume seven liters per hundred kilometers. So because this is, has a tiny 37 liter tank, then I think I'm gonna refuel here at Valbay because we have to take that detour anyway to, to key at Valbay. Then I might as well also refuel. Yeah, something like that. That's the plan <laughs> so far. Okay, I'm going to refuel. I have to put it on the floor, the camera. That's fine. But, uh, but to do it quick. Okay, that didn't, didn't take too long, but uh, now I have to park here. 
a little bit away from the gas station because there was simply no other spot there. But I forgot to get the receipt, but I can look into the bank in my net bank anyway to, to find out how much it cost. But it was 22 something liters. So now I had to go to the restroom. So the car is just sitting there and I had to go to the restroom. I haven't gone to the restroom for the past three hours. We are on the move again. Now this is the 120 zone south of Varberg. It's, uh, I think this stretch is about 100 kilometers long where you can drive at 120 plus. So uh, the battery, we don't care about the battery. It's, it's been low now since, since, uh, <laughs> since Norway. Um, so I'm not able to drive too fast because of these left lane huggers in front of me. But uh, status so far is that um, we have driven, where, where's the clock? There's no clock here, but see here. The time now is, oh shit, sorry. We've been on the road for three and a half hours. Three and a half hours, I mean, we have covered about 300 and uh, almost 370 kilometers. So the average speed is just right above 100 kilometers per hour right now. But we drove through the slowest stretch so far. You know, the stretch via Norway and also Gothenburg is slow. And there was a little bit of stau uh, that we avoided by taking a detour. So it's no big deal. So, so far, so good, right? Uh, now, can these guys get out of the way? Look at this. Freaking, freaking fossils, man. Wait, wait, I'm also a fossil now. <laughs> but in my mind, I'm an EV driver. We are now at the halfway mark, roughly around here, after 500 kilometers. This is a little bit misleading because of the error, but we are at 500 kilometers now, roughly. And it took four hours and 35 minutes. Oh, that's a new record. I can't remember any car driving that fast. So this is the power of the fossil. Yeah, now we got to turn back. Okay, let's find a way back. Okay, and by the way, you know, I forgot to explain to you guys what's up with the whole uh, trip here because, um, you know, if you understand uh, the, like, the, the origin or the, the, the beginning of the 1000 km challenge, why did I do it? Well, the first time when I did it with the Tesla Model 3, I wanted to prove that a Model 3, which is an efficient EV with fast charging network and fast charging capabilities, can drive 1,000 kilometer challenge, I mean 1,000 kilometer without being that much slower than the fossil. That was the original idea behind 1,000 kilometer challenge. And then I started testing other cars and then became a fun, fun and interesting and entertaining, entertaining challenge to do it with leaves and whatever. They spent 16 hours doing it. But you guys have to remember that, that the original plan, the original idea with this challenge was to not beat a fossil but to just show you how fast this one is compared to a fossil and i've never tested a fossil that at the exact same route driving at the exact same speed and everything you know let's just show you higher here that i'm not i'm not messing around i'm not i'm not rigging this i'm also driving fast but not too fast so i'm more or less following traffic maybe going a little bit faster than them but not too much faster so that's why i drive a fossil car right now because I want to it's like a reference test to see how fast is it for a fossil driver but keep in mind that many fossil drivers would drive 1,000 kilometers like this family here you see some clothes there you probably see some people you have some kids in the back they don't rush it they stop when they feel like it they have food breaks whatever they don't eat sandwich in the car and just fill up and rush so I will be somewhere in the middle so I will take a food break soon uh, at Chop Chop. I'll go for fast food. Hopefully it takes about 20 minutes. But why am I using a plug-in hybrid, by the way? And why am I not using a, a diesel? Because diesel is the most obvious choice, right? Well, I have to explain that. I asked, first I asked Möller. I asked them if I can borrow a diesel Passat. And they said, well, Sorry, Mac, we have sold out all, all our uh, fossil uh, press cars, the dealers, di diesel car. They, they are waiting for better, uh, new, newer models. I was like, okay. Then I asked Euturia, she, they have uh, Skoda and Ren Renault. 
and same answer there. Sorry, Mac, we, it's summer, uh, we don't have any cars, and also the employees tend to borrow them. I'm like, okay. Then I ask BMW, do you guys have any diesel? And they're like, no, diesel? What the heck? And the, BMW told me that 90% of the fossil car sales for the BMW is plug-in hybrids. They are selling lots of plug-in hybrids. So I was like, uh, okay, but they didn't have any cars there for to be able to borrow. So I was like, okay, what a bummer. But then I asked Kia, was I always wanted to test that Kia Stinger, but they didn't have the Stinger. But Kia was so nice to provide me with this keyed, the keyed. So that's why we are here with a plug-in hybrid. And I feel like it is relevant to use a plug-in hybrid because lots of people are buying hybrids nowadays. Uh, like the sales figures from BMW. So that's why we're here. And you guys will be will be criticizing me and saying, but you have to take so many refueling stops. Well, that's the problem because this this Kia here has only 37 liter tank. Most fossil uh, plug-in hybrids, they have about 40 liter of tank only because they have to make space for the battery. But you see the argument for the fossil lovers is always that, well, but a refueling stop is just a couple of minutes and we have seen now it, it only takes three minutes. So in the long run, here, 1000 kilometer challenge, that extra refueling stop really means nothing. So, yeah, just back off, guys. You know what I mean? But anyway, let's enjoy the ride. <laughs> we are now going to descend Hollandsosen, and most fossil cars they have to brake here, but we can regen. So, let's see now. We start with 11%, and you see here. Okay, okay, let me show you guys. Oh, zip, zip, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're going downhill behind, we're stuck behind the fossil, but going downhill, 12%. Oh, it's accelerating. It's actually not braking, it's not regening yet. Now it, it uh, reached the desired speed. Oh, it's actually not regening. Huh. Interesting. Really? Really? But why is it not regening? We're not going that fast. You see? We are halfway down the slope now. And you can see the brake light on that uh, fossil. He's braking. Okay, that was a little bit disappointing. We have 13%. <laughs> Huh? We only gained one percent down here. What? what how was it? What, why? I wonder if the the friction in the motor is bigger or whatever. The friction in the drivetrain is larger here. That's my only explanation. Are getting close to uh, Kungsbakka, chop chop, and we are now at the six hour mark. All right, and after six hours, we have travel uh, well, this one 658 plus the four percent error. And we uh, this will be the last stop for us. So, you see, we travel about three hours between each stop, and the total stops will be only yeah, two stops. And we also have to refuel again. This is the problem with plug in hybrids is that they have. A tiny battery. I mean, so <laughs> but that too. They have a tiny battery and a smaller tank because it's a it's a compromise. So two turning stops, and then actually, when we start noticing, this one is a plug-in hybrid. You know, that one is a plug-in hybrid. That's there are lots of plug-in hybrids out there. Just haven't realized it yet, <laughs> but there are so many hybrids out there. So this test 
with this tiny battery, I mean tank, is still relevant. Another refueling stop, this time in a slightly different uh, viewing angle. Okay, again, use the... Come on, go. What do you have to do? Just start press here, start, port, insert the card. Just check here, yeah, you guys see it. Wait. Okay, visa. Come on, checking, communication, okay. Pin card. Why can't we have this in charging station? This type of user interface. Will, do you want extra? No, I don't want any discount. No, I don't want coffee, no. Just start tanking. Take the card, okay, good. Let's open this one. And then choose miles plus miles, miles. 95 unleaded. I don't want any premium stuff here. Okay, I think we need to refuel another uh, 20 liter or something. 13.98 uh, sec per liter. Six liters, I'm not sure if you guys see it. Eight liters, nine. 10, 11, 12. This shouldn't take too long. 16, 19 liters. Wow, two, what the heck? 300 sec. There, 21.5 liters. 21.58 liters. 301.69 sec. We're done. That was a quick refill. Okay. Now let's eat. Actually, since we are already here, the front windscreen is so dirty. I haven't cleaned it ever on this trip. It's full of bugs. So I will take that extra time because I believe people also do this. If you refuel, you will also clean the windscreen. It takes a, just a couple of minutes, like here, and then it's better safety. And it looks, yeah. So we will of course include this. Now normally, when I'm doing this challenge with EVs, the car will be charging, but right now, the car is doing nothing. Really. But the refueling was fast, so that's always good. So we just do this one. Of course, you can say that, well, but if you travel with four peop several people, then one guy can refuel while your wife is cleaning the windscreen. Well, that is true, but sometimes you, you're also in a rush and you're traveling alone. So yeah, there will always be, yeah, but if, but what if, yeah, I know, I know. A, B, C, always be cleaning. <laughs> okay, good, done. Now we're gonna eat at Chop Chop. The car will be parked here doing nothing. And we will have food, just like these cars. You see, lots of fossil cars here. These cars might also be on a trip and they're just parked here for no reason. So, let's get some chop-chop. Let's eat here. Uh, let's see, let's go for this one. Single fly lice, orange chicken, my favorite. Uh, Coke classic, whatever. Small one, go. And then I pay for it. Wait, no, no, just pay for it. Okay, let's go. No, I don't want anything, no. Oh yeah, the food is here. This is fried lice with uh, orange chicken. Mm. And a fortune cookie. Okay, let's eat. We are done. That food break took half an hour. Now the car is nice and hot. Oh, let's get out of here. We are now on the run again. And um, I was a little bit bored. So, uh, oh, should I go behind? I just, I just hugged the left lane. I'm shooting video. But I switch on sport mode. Yeah, I like the looks of the sport mode. But you know, when in sport mode, it will charge up the hybrid battery. And you see, we are at 40% now. Some people say that it will charge it up to um, 
to 50% only. So I wanted to see how high it charged, but it's been stuck. It was actually stuck at at 42% for the longest time. Now it dropped to 40%. And I noticed that if you go here on energy flow, you see that it actually spends back, it spends the energy and then now we charge it. So my theory is that the car will try to run it on the most economical way and then you know how is it charging the battery? Well the engine is transferring some of the leftover power to actually spin the electric motor. So the the engine is is uh, you know it's regening the, the the electric motor. Yeah, basically. That's how it's doing it. So you take fuel you take fuel and burn it inside the engine with 30% efficiency and then you use that motion to feed the electric motor and then there is even further losses and then the, the actual electricity going into the battery might have as much as 75% loss or you know 25% efficiency by the time it reaches the battery so this is a this is a highly inefficient way of charging the battery <laughs> but I guess for performance you want to do this so if you're not in the sport mode it will not charge the battery by running it you know on normal driving it will only charge the battery when you're regening yeah let's see how many percent now huh 39 it's going down ah oh. So I guess if you want to recharge the battery, you have to be in sport mode and drive slower than this. Maybe drive at 110 or something. But this is it, guys. Eight hour mark. And, well, okay. I worked out that the average speed right now is 104 kilometers per hour. Yeah, we have to take into account the error. So 104 kilometers per hour. We are faster than Tesla right now. Yes, faster than Model 3. Barely faster. <laughs> okay, so now we have less than 200 kilometers left. It's kind of, this is Saturday evening. Very low traffic. Let's hope we can get past the border fast. Yeah, the border is a little bit of concern right now because they're gonna question, hey, where you been? Do you have to quarantine and all that stuff? Uh, Oslo, 185, Strömstad, 51. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, we are stuck at the border here, right after the bridge, the border control. So it's about, well, okay, let's say 1835 then. Uh, we, sh we should subtract this time because it's, it's not normal. It's just the Corona summer. So we'll see. Yeah, we're still stuck here. It's not, it's not moving at all. I don't know what the heck is going on. Okay, we are on the move again. We see overhead spin of bike and I started recording a little bit late. I didn't want to show the camera or the stuff here for the police. So they asked me where I, where I was and I said, I've been at uh, uh, Helsingborg and I'm testing this car. So I it's had the minimum stops and they saw some suction cups. So they were like, okay, have a nice evening. And now off we go. So we could subtract five minutes from the end time then. Yeah, to be fair. So now let's finish it. Okay, it's seven now. This is an, almost a nine hour mark, except that we have to subtract five minutes. But anyway, we are getting close to Oslo and you see the trip now says 905 kilometers, but we will not have the 999 this time because because of the error in the, in the trip. So we will do the, the countdown um, to 960 kilometers. 960 here is actually 1000 kilometer. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of tricky, but we have to be fair. Everything needs to be correct, right? Right? Okay guys, we have, to, we have to count down. Countdown time. It's a bit late. 9595. 
9596 9597 9598 9599 960 Yes, 900, uh, 1,000 kilometer basically, 1,000 kilometer over here. You see, this is weird because the countdown occurs later because we have driven less, yeah, we have taken less detours for charging stops, well, refilling stops. Only two stops versus six, seven or 10 stops, you know? Oh yes, okay, now let's go to the gas station and refuel. <laughs> Oh, the time, the time. I almost got the time. <laughs> 1931. Woohoo! So it means subtract five minutes. Nine hours and 25 minutes. Nine hours and 25 is the time. Oh, yeah. Last refueling stop. Oh. We have to find out how much energy we spend. Okay, I moved the car away from the pump, but let me give you guys some numbers. So I checked the average, actually the fuel price in Norway and Sweden was the same. It was 1.35 euros per liter and we averaged 6.1 liters per 100 kilometers. So which means that the whole trip, um, we spend 61 liters of fuel or gasoline, 95 octane. So that means that uh, it was 80 euros in fuel. We are not counting toll road or whatever because that could be variable on, depending on where you go. Uh, but if you compare it to a Model 3, the Model 3 spent about 230 kilowatt hour of energy and then we can count that some of it is from home charging, 60 kilowatt hour, and then we have to add 70 kilowatt hour supercharging. And then 70 and one kilowatt hour in Sweden cost 0.25 euros at Tesla supercharger. And that means that for Tesla, it's 50 euros. So with a Tesla, you will arrive half an hour slower than this fossil car, but you save 30 euros. So are you willing to save, are you willing to arrive half an hour slower to save 30 euros? Because basically what it means is that a Tesla, when you are charging extra times, that time can be quality time. You can be spending time with your family. You can be slacking. You can check your Facebook or whatever. You are not standing still waiting for half an hour extra, you know? And I also did the, the calculation for an e-tron. So e-tron is thirstier, but if we assume that e-tron has the free uh, Audi Transit deal for one year, um, it will cost 3.3 sec per kilowatt hour. Okay, I did the calculation there. Uh, you the e-tron also needs to charge 220 kilowatt hour at Ionity and the total cost for, uh, for e-tron would be 80 euros which is the same as this car but e-tron is bigger so you have to compare the fuel price for let's say uh, a Volvo XC90 or something and that one might consume uh, more juice and then let's say 100 euros for the XC90 so then even the e-tron is cheaper than a fossil and I mentioned e-tron because e-tron is the closest one e-tron did it in 10 hours and 20 something minutes so okay, e-tron might be 45 minutes to almost an hour slower than a fossil car but still you still save some money there and like I mentioned that time that you're charging at Ionity is still quality time it depends how how well you spend the time and then yeah so the reason why I chose this uh, plug-in hybrid, by the way, because you might criticize me and say that, hey, you should have used a diesel car. Well, but the problem was that 
People nowadays, they don't buy diesel, they buy plug-in hybrids. BMW are selling lots and lots of plug-in hybrids. So this is relevant for people. And even those extra uh, refueling stops didn't cost me more than about five minutes. So yeah, I think that's it. This is the, the first and only 1000 kilometer challenge I will do with, with, um, with a fossil car. I will not do more 1000 kilometers with different fossil cars because the difference in time will be neglectable. It will be five minute difference maybe. So it was just to set a reference time for the fossil. That's it. So yes, anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.